Hi there, and let's get to it. If we start going through these palettes from left to right, the first thing we're going to come across is the Camera Raw palette. This will be the first step we take when processing our clips to ensure that our starting point, the debayer settings, are correct. But let's hold on a second. What is raw footage? And how does it compare to other popular color format readers like Log C and Rec. 709? First of all, these three terms refer to color encoders that are applied to digital footage upon capture in camera. RAW is a format used by a small amount of high-tech camera producers that enable us to capture light without imposing a color space, subsampling, or even a substantial luminance influence. This is interesting because you need these things in order to see the image you captured on your monitor, and without them, you end up with what looks like digital noise. That's why RAW footage goes hand-in-hand -hand with the debayer, an algorithm that processes this data and outputs it as a series of RGB pixels. Debayering, or demosaicing, is applied before any kind of grading takes place, and results in a very flat-looking image with a wide luminance range. And that's kind of where its power lies. If an image has a wide luminance or chrominance range, it has much better grading potential. You're less likely to lose things in the shadows or in the highlights because you're able to pull things in and out. So, with digital film, often when you shoot an overcast sky, you end up with a blown-out image. In this example, I've got a debayered Cinema DNG clip, and I can definitely increase my luminance to create the overblown effect, but more importantly, I can reduce the midtones to reveal a lot of hidden luminance information that was not previously visible to me. If this had been a Rec. 709 clip, I could not have gotten this range of luma control out of it. But before we move on to that, let's talk about log footage. To begin with, log footage tends to look as flat as debayered raw footage, and contains much of the same grading potential. Without prominent colors burnt into the pixel data, you're much more free to grade the image in any way you like. Just like raw footage, it can be captured with little or no compression during camera encoding, but unlike raw, the white balance and exposure will be locked into the image. Rec. 709 is the standard for HDTV systems. It has roughly 2 million luma samples per frame and contains the least amount of information. The luminance and white balance are baked in, and overall it tends to look more graded and contrasted, which is actually a limitation. If pixels are more rigidly defined in their colors, that means you'll have less of an ability to pull back or to change the colors. Rec. 709 tends to be highly compressed and tends to be used in lower end market cameras that are incapable of recording the amount of data that RAW or LOG requires. Regardless, RAW and LOG cameras tend to have an option to display the footage as Rec. 709 on the viewfinder to give the DLP and director a better representation of what the footage will look like after it's edited. When we're going over lookup tables later on, I'll show you how you can quickly apply the Rec. 709 look to your footage so you can start grading quickly. If you want to know which digital camera companies support RAW, you can always check the Camera RAW section of the project settings where the companies are listed in the top right corner. And that's it for now. We'll be taking a look at the Camera RAW palette in the next video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.